Hi there, my name is Cindy James. Welcome to my encaustic art studio. Today I'd like to talk to you about making stencils out of a material called Tyvek. Now Tyvek is used in the construction industry and it's basically a moisture barrier on the outside of houses. You've probably seen it if you've been in any areas where they're constructing houses. It's very thin, very lightweight, very strong, very crinkly, and it makes great stencils. Now you can cut stencils out of this material by hand. You can draw on it, cut it with a pair of scissors or an X-Acto blade. You can also cut them on a cutting machine. I have a Cricut Maker 3. So I cut this stencil basically using the medium cardstock setting with extra pressure. It is a very strong fibrous type of uh, material. It's plastic, so it may take you a little bit of uh, playing around to get the correct cutting settings to work on this, but uh, as you can see, you can get very detailed cuts out of this material. So I'd like to use this product with pan pastels. If you've never used pan pastels, they are great with encaustic. It's basically pastels that are compressed into a pan. Uh, you can apply them with your finger or there are applicator sponges that they sell with this brand. Uh, you can also just use makeup sponges. And uh, yeah, they work really, really well with encaustic. So this is just a really quick video to show you about stencils, pan pastels, uh, and the tie back. So let's get started. So I do have a tray that holds my pan pastels. I have quite a, quite a few of these. I've got three trays. And um, yeah, it's actually really nice. There's a lid that goes over top. I can stack them up and it keeps from getting a lot of the powder from spreading around. So I'm, I've been playing around on this panel I'm going to add to it. Uh, the other nice thing about the Tyvek stencils, if you cut them on a machine, it's, it's really easy to just also take a scissors and go. I'm just gonna remove this border like I say, it is a very strong material, but it's quite easily cut. I think maybe I will cut some shapes that aren't quite so, so much of a, just a square. One thing I should note, Tyvek is not a heat resistant product. So if you, if you torch it or use a heat gun with it, it will melt. So it's not intended to be used with, with the heat. It's uh, just something that you can apply, remove, and then fuse. So keep that in mind because some stencils that you can buy are heat resistant. This is not that product. So I'm just going to push it down with my fingers. So my, my wax is just warm, but I'm going to burnish these down with a spoon. And this is just some tracing paper. Just going to give it a light burnish to make sure it's stuck down onto the wax so I can get a nice crisp stencil. need a lot and I'm just going to use a fairly dark color this is one of the applicators you can buy but like I say a makeup sponge would probably work just fine 
and I think this is Payne's Gray that I'm using. And if your wax is really warm, you might find that the sponge will uh, stick a little bit or, or not stick necessarily, but basically it can leave little scratches in the surface of your wax. So you, you want it warm, but not, not too warm, I guess. Just enough so that you can get the stencils to stick on the surface. Usually I find a baby wipe works good to remove the pastel off my fingers or you can wear gloves, of course. Okay, so now I'm going to, actually I'm just gonna kind of run my fingers over this a little bit. It's still a little bit dusty, like the pan pastel is not as dusty as a lot of dry pastels, but it is a little bit dusty, so. Just gonna take off the stencil. really a nice crisp image. And this panel has been prepped with lots of wax already so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fuse it but just lightly because if you overfuse, what will happen is the the pan pastel will will move, and sometimes it cracks, sometimes it sort of bubbles a little bit. But I'm going to just give it a light fuse in all four directions to set it down, and then I usually oh did I not <laughs> look at that I missed a stencil so. Here we go. Okay, fortunately I did not apply much heat. Okay, so just a light fuse. And I just kind of go each direction. I'm not looking to move the wax. I just want to set the pastel into the wax, just liquefy the wax enough so that it absorbs the powder. And then once I am done this, I am going to apply a clear layer over top. Because I like to seal the pan pastel with a clear layer of medium so that it's not so fragile on the surface. So I found when you apply wax over top of pan pastel, it's very easy to smear the pastel. So what I've learned is that if I let my wax, the surface cool so that it's once again warm but not hot, uh, and also if the wax from the pan is not too hot, you can usually get a good pass over top without smearing the wax, but it can be a little tricky sometimes. So we'll see how lucky I get today. I'm just gonna warm that up a little bit. Okay, 
Okay, so you a warm surface, warm wax, but not too hot. I kind of usually knock the excess off, kind of give it a count, one or two, three, and then I'm gonna go for it. Okay, not too bad. Give it again. Another good reason to put a clear layer over top of your pastel is that it works well as a barrier. So if you decide that you know you want to remove something above this but keep your design underneath it it is possible to scrape it back to this point got a little bit of a smear there but and I'm gonna go again from this side take a little bit of the excess off where I overlapped. Okay, now you can fuse as normal. Sometimes when you get uh, brush strokes in the wax that is going over top of the pan pastel, it can cause a little bit of separation of the pastel underneath, so I kind of expect that might happen here. But I don't think it'll be too bad. Once again, I try not to overfuse. Take your time. Just give it a quick pass and then turn your panel a quarter turn and go again. Yeah, so I did get a little bit of separation of the blue under the clear wax, but not too bad. I'm happy with that. I have also used these with with encaustic. They they do work. You just it's not really an easy endeavor to clean them, but you can lay them on your palette. Uh, and just dab them with a paper towel to get them clean. But I also work at a low temperature on my palette. It's only about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Like I say, these are not heat resistant. So if your palette is at a higher temperature, it could melt. And nobody wants plastic on their palette. This stencil is a store-bought stencil from Stencil Girl. And I'm going to use this one as well uh, to apply wax over top. But one of the great things about the Tyvek stencils, like I say, you can cut your own stencils at home very easily. And uh, yeah, especially with the Cricut, it's, the Cricut took a while to learn too, but it does make cutting very simple. So this one I actually am going to burnish as well, just lightly. And then I wanna put some these on up here. I'm going to cover it with white. Now because we have that clear barrier down, we should be safe from any smearing. Whoops. So 
the tie that can handle some heat obviously but definitely you don't want to be fusing with that on there like I did earlier okay and I'm gonna fill in some of this I mean, the Tyvek stencils are so thin, it's very easy to get the wax in around them with uh, the store-bought stencil. It's a little more work to get, to get the wax kind of in between there. I mean, and that's that's thicker than I want, so I might just very very lightly scrape some of this back before I peel it off. And I wouldn't let this cool before I pull those stencils off, so I'm going to be pretty quick about this. easy to see. And this one is not so easy. I think the end is here. too bad. This one cleans up pretty easily on the palette. I'm just gonna lay it down and, and dab it with a cloth. going to let this cool a little bit before I fuse it because it's still pretty warm and I want to make sure I don't lose my imagery so we're just going to give that a minute. Okay I mean this is still warm but I sat for a few minutes so I'm just going to give it a light fuse. easy to overdo it. I like my surfaces pretty smooth to start with so often go too far with this kind of thing so I try not to it really helps to stop, turn my panel, fuse, stop, turn my panel, fuse. It helps me from overheating most of the time. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you was the use of Tyvek as a stencil in encaustic with pan pastels. And then also bonus, I guess, uh, the stencil with encaustic over top. So, you know, you can continue to layer however you might like and uh, see what you get. But I did want to show you what happens if you very gently fuse the stencil together. It's like a stencil, but not a stencil. I'm just going to use a low flame and 
you know, I did this by accident because I did overfuse. But because I have that barrier layer in between my color and the white, it sort of moves the stencil together without bringing the color up from beneath. And I actually really like this. You just gently keep fusing. Eventually it will melt together and you get some very interesting shapes. I'm just going to take this brush hair out right here. Now I'm not liquefying my surface. I just want it to move ever so slightly to fill in the gaps but leave a hint of something there. But I, you know, I'm, I've over used stencils many times but I don't usually have that barrier layer down and that kind of made all the difference I think just gonna go a little slower through here I like to get the bubbles out Kind of lost lost it in the middle there but I still have some elsewhere and the the honeycomb shows up really well so yes yeah, still don't want to overfuse but it does give a pretty effect okay That's that. Thank you very much for watching. And as they say nowadays, please like and subscribe. See you next time.